throughout the week deserves a little bit more attention. We call them the underappreciated storyline. So I'll start quickly with two. Okay. I love when NFL players use their platform for positivity. We saw J.J. Watt and all of the money he raised that we heard Jared Goff say this week that it inspired him. He's from uh, the area devastated by wildfires uh, up by Napa, and he started a, a fundraiser, a GoFundMe page to, to sort of donate and help with that. So all this positive stuff that's going on is awesome. We, as a show, need to shout out Chris Long for what he did. Yes, donating fact. his first six game checks uh, to Charlottesville to put some positive just energy and stuff with scholarships to uh, Charlottesville, which was amazing. And then he came out, of course, and said that, oh, by the way, the next following 10 paychecks are also going to go to help uh, with educational situations in the three cities that he played in. I thought it was just an incredible thing to do, and he's doing it so selfless. He's playing for free this year, you guys. Yeah, I was shocked with this. This is incredible. So not a game check. All of them. It's blown away. Uh-huh. That's uh, awesome. So he's already raised over $200,000. It's a pledge. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's called the Pledge 10 for Tomorrow, and it helps support educational equality in the cities that he played. You can go on and you can donate $10. You can donate whatever. Players from all around the league, and Fletcher just donated last night, have helped really make this uh, just a huge thing. And the fact that he's doing it is just really amazing. He deserves some love from it from our show. The second thing, this whole Crucial Catch month has been so amazing, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. gone beyond breast yeah. cancer. So, you know, we do the reads, and we say go go check out the, you know, the digital tool. I went and I did it, and I, I looked at it. You put in some of your specs, and it tells you just little guidelines of things that you can do. I love that not only is it just the whole NFL doing it, but individually teams take it to the next level. I was looking last night what Vic Beasley is doing mm -hmm. with the Rally Foundation down in Atlanta. Every week last week, they had cancer awareness. They did something. They are, they are pampering cancer survivors. They are bringing them to games. They are doing Everybody's affected by cancer. Everyone is. Yeah. And the fact that the American Cancer Society, uh, that they didn't make this a one-day thing or a four, 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 you know, just on Sundays. It is every day other teams doing a lot of different things. And we have, you know, like awful news around Nate Solder's kid back mm -hmm. in chemotherapy. His son, it's devastating and affects everybody. So uh, I'm actually really impressed with what the NFL has done with this. That's, that's, that's awesome. Chris Long, shout out that's to you. That's yeah. A ton of teams across the league that are getting involved in so many different things. That's incredible, okay? Um, I'm going to go go a different round. I'm going to go a little bit more particular, uh, and I'm going to talk about a wide receiver, and not in the sense that I, I did it in, in shows past where I would just highlight a guy and talk about these enormous numbers that he has and pat him on the back like everybody else is doing. This is almost opposite. Uh, I want to I wanted to give him a little bit of credit is because he's a diva talented wide receiver, but he's not acting like a diva. Okay. Okay? It would be perfectly fine if Julio came out and said, I need the rock. This team is nothing without me. I'm the best receiver in football. We're losing games. We're losing games. But he doesn't, and he hasn't, and I can appreciate that. Let's go back to Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah. Keyshawn Johnson wrote a book. Just passed me the damn ball. Yep. T.O. once said, I don't foresee myself being a decoy. It's like putting Shaq on the court and not giving him the ball. And listen, I can respect that. <laughs> um, it, it, Keyshawn also said, if I can get the team going, I feel like I'm going to be the one to do that. Chad Johnson said, the whole team feeds on me. The whole team. They know if 85 is up then it's going to be a good day. This is the Diva Diaries, just like a young middle school girl writing in her notebook. Most receivers, we get in our feelings, and we write in our diary, and then we say it out loud, and it causes a ripple effect on the team, and oftentimes it's not that good. For a guy who ranks number 17 in catches, Julio Jones, who has a microphone in front of his face six days out of the week, including games after where he's not getting the rock and his team is losing, and he can easily throw everybody under the bus, and we'll look at him and say, you know what, Julio, you're right, he doesn't. So Julio Jones, as a receiver, as a former diva, as a guy who talks more times than I needed to, I appreciate you. That's good. That's good. Got to give him that ball, though. Got to give him that ball. With all that said, pass him the damn ball. I have a question. Do, would it be better if he did? Do we don't look? Like, what if he came out and said constructively? Maybe it would actually help. Give me the ball. Wouldn't then they maybe squeaky wheel gets the wheeze, get him the ball, and then we're happier, and then the offense thrives. I think it's already understood. Okay. I mean, you got your head coach, your defensive minded Dan Quinn, coming out and saying we got an issue getting our number one wide receiver. Part the ball. of me is like, it's yeah, that. come out and say. But at some point, ball. you have to say something. Calvin Johnson didn't say anything for a long time. He was quiet. He would sometimes lean over to me and be like, hey, Nate, man, just tell them. You know, they got two guys on me. It's safety over the top. Just throw the ball. I go, okay, hold on. I hear you. Hey, Linehan, listen, just throw the ball. I don't care who's on them. That's what Calvin's saying. A year later, Calvin get up off the bench, go walk over to the office coordinator himself and say, give me the damn rock if you want to win this Ooh. game. And that's what Julio Jones needs to do. Okay. okay. My underappreciated storyline this week is a story of 
Three friends from college. If you went to college, you have a special place in your heart for your college crew, right? Whereas your childhood friends are the ones that you cherish for life and grew up with, and your work friends are the ones that get you through that nine to five, you get to pick your friends in college. It's a unique situation. Sure. <laughs> so I'm heading to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where three guys all got to campus the same autumn, 2013, from different places. One was from Maryland, one was from Ohio, one was from West Virginia, and they left as good buds doing it on an even bigger stage. So whereas your college friends at home, my college friends may have graduated, or not graduated, hello guys, <laughs> and headed to the professional worlds of accounting and sales or whatever job, Bears rookie quarterback Mitchell Trubisky, Cowboys wide receiver Ryan Switzer, and Eagles wide receiver Mac Hollins left their college days in Chapel Hill behind and are all currently fulfilling their NFL dreams as rookies in the NFL. How tight are these guys? How strong is that bond? Well, the trio who spent all those years together in Chapel Hill decided they were going to all wear the same rookie number as rookies in oh, the NFL. Oh, that's awesome. These are three guys who are boys in North Carolina. Trubisky was the backup quarterback for a long time. Matt Collins was a special teams player, and Switzer was the underneath threat. They were never the real stars of the team until their final few seasons there, but they got to campus at the same time, and they grew up together. Trubisky is the winner of two straight games now. Switzer is getting on the field for the Cowboys. Yep. And Matt Collins, well, guys... We love Matt Collins. <laughs> yeah. Let's look what Matt Collins did on Monday. He rode a bike to the game. What's more college than hopping on a bike and racing, so college, racing right. through the quad in a hoodie? <laughs> Surprise, Mac didn't pull out a frisbee. and toss the B on the quad lawn or pull a zany prank on the RA. And then he goes and plays in the game. Two oh, boys, boy, right? Mario. Three guys, Mario. all college Ooh. boys, doing it on Kill the big up. stage. They're all wearing number 10. And I believe we were so inspired by Mac Collins that earlier this show, uh -oh. we gave our best interpretation that of <laughs> That ain't Terry. Look at Kyle's face. Hey, I love Kyle. yours the most. It's a slow motion. Yeah, I just like, it's the remix. You know, it's slow the remix. Yeah, it's always better. So that's my underappreciated. Three guys who showed up pretty unheralded to college down in North Carolina, and they're all doing it on the big stage wearing the same number. North Carolina football. What up? Straight Great college, bro. So For a quick second, I thought you were going to bring us jerseys. Uh, I oh. Uh, spoiled. Oh, right. Spoiled, Sorry. yeah. Which one of those guys had the most socks on the doorknob? Oh! I'm just kidding. College humor, guys. We're talking college. Come on. They're good guys. Got you. Don't worry about it. I got what are you talking about? Good. I'm just talking no, about got laundry. You. I got you, man. All right. No, 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 laundry. Well, it says laundry. That's there a college thing. Like no one does. Oh, sock out. Sock out and the laundry lady comes. It's like, God. Um, we got things to take care of here because I feel really strongly about this. Guys, the other night, um, Ed Hockley was the official on the field. And... Uh, did you guys know that Ed Hockley is physically strong and has a big, impressive physique? No, tell me In more. the officiating world, Kay, it is the Antonio Gates played basketball. Everyone knows. And then they tell you that, and they'll be like, and check this out. Did you also know he was an attorney? <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've known that for over a decade. It's very impressive on all fronts. And then on, on the Monday Nighter, he was with Deuce Gruden, John's son, and they're doing the physique picture, and there it is, like generational stuff. It's awesome. And Ed Hockley is a square-jawed leader of men out there, and he does a <laughs> fantastic job, and I love him. I just know that story so so well, and I've heard it so many times, and here's the thing. There's other new blood out there in the, in the black and white stripes, and they stay in shape, too. Listen, Arnold Schwarzenegger was Mr. Universe for three years in a row in the late 60s, and then you see the throne, all right? <laughs> to, to, to Frank Zane and uh -huh. Bill, Bill Pearl. So this is what I'm talking about. The underappreciated... Hockley's not the only one staying fit, all right? Cleet Blakeman, this man, look at yeah, Cleet. Cleet. This is number 34, a Nebraska quarterback. Cleet? This is a man in, during Super Bowl 50, I'm not making this up, he Cleet. trended as hashtag hot ref. <laughs> this really happened, so much so. Let me take a look This here. really happened. He went into Kathy Lee and Hoda following <laughs> the Super Bowl in his referee attire with his lovely wife and threw flags as the hot ref. So let's give Cleet some, let's give Cleet some credit. Next, number two, Craig 
Craig Rolstead, all right, or as we're going to call him, Craig Swolstead. <laughs> he is all, he is a high school AD. AD as in all day, as in how he hits the hip sled and the cardio, all right? <laughs> Swolstead is a fiend Swolstead. on the spin bike. Let's give him some credit. Hockey League's not the only guy staying in shape. And then lastly, Gene Serator, all right, or as we call him, Gene Sarah Torn Up. He's number 114. He runs a sanitary supply company, and you know he wipes down the military press when he's done wailing on it. Only referee's <laughs> challenge here is how many times Lean Gene can get up 280 on the incline. That is my man. Hockey Lee is the godfather. I understand it. I respect it. But these refs are guilty of holding holding the kettlebells every single morning before the sun comes up. He's not the only one in the game. The Godfather, but these guys stay in shape, too. They're getting a little tight in the sleeve area. I see you guys. I respect you guys. Love it. That's great. Underappreciated. Cleet, Cleet, Cleet Blakeman. <laughs> Cleet Blakeman. Strong name. Hosh, hashtag hot ref. <laughs> Who knew? You know how they had that hot felon guy on Twitter? That's the hot ref, Mr. Blakeman. I love him. Hot ref. Two. That's Kathy right. Leonota, I don't know if it was on Wine Day oh, Wednesday yeah. or Thursday or Thursday. I met those lovely ladies. They love themselves some, some man candy, and they oh, love Lee Blakeman. We'll be back after this. Those are the underappreciated storylines of the week. If you have anything to add, hit us up at hashtag Team with uh, As we get ready to talk about...